for decades. There has been a lot of motion without movement when it comes to improving opportunities for women worldwide. In 1975, the United Nations announced the beginning of the Decade of Women. To build momentum, the United Nations then held its first World Congress on Women. In 2010, nearly 40 years after the so-called Decade of Women began, a UN report confirmed what most of us already knew, except that in most countries, women are still underrepresented in all areas of decision making. The underrepresentation of women is not only within this political arena, but it is also at the corporate sphere, an issue that became more topical after the recent corporate scandals and global financial failings of major corporate entities. The consequential impact of this on the global economy raised issues about the effectiveness or otherwise of homogeneous boards and the comparative value of having more women on boards. Consequently, scrutiny turned from the composition of corporate boards with several resulting outputs from the financial scandals, and I think this includes the Cadbury Report and the Higgs Review. All these and many more made far-reaching recommendations, one of which is the need for increased diversity on the boards of not only publicly quoted companies, but also state-owned enterprises. However, the issue is whether these recommendations have had the desired effect, and of course, evidence abound about the slow pace of growth of the number of women on boards, and this assertion, I can tell you, is definitely supported by statistics as well as anecdotal evidence. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa, so it was imperative that we be a part of this global movement for the repositioning of women. But we had no statistics, no way to gauge the true picture. WIMBIS commissioned a survey for gender representation on the boards of publicly quoted companies on the Nigerian Stock Exchange and 20 high-revenue privately owned companies. The results were absolutely shocking. We found that women represent only 9.9% of board members. Only 2.6% have female chairpersons. Only 6.3% of women are chief executive officers. And executive directors, only 8.8% are women. What this means is that in all these categories, over 90% are men. We knew it was bad. We just didn't realize it was that bad. Something had to be done. But what are the factors militating against the advancement of women within the socio-economic and political decision-making space? These can be addressed at the individual, societal, and corporate levels. Our patriarchal society in Nigeria encourages not only the discriminatory nurturing of girls and boys, but it also encourages women to make perceived feminine career choices that offer no preparation for executive positions. There is also the inadequate access to the civil justice system, which is an offshoot of the poverty endemic, and this is an endemic that affects both women and men. Corporate exclusionary factors include the stereotyping of leadership styles and positions, with preference for male leadership styles. Companies sometimes also set very narrow search criteria, oftentimes limiting search to those within their personal and professional radar. Companies operating in emerging economies have limited talent pool for se of senior women executives to feed the board pipeline, and this oftentimes leads to an overlay or interlocking boards where the same women are recycled on, on several corporate boards at the same time. On the individual level, apart from the inability to self-promote, women have to deal with traditional employment issues, which affect their human capital development. There is also the inability to make appropriate time commitment, and in some cases, Women are just not ambitious enough to scale the heights and move beyond the middle management level. Another key limiting factor is the reluctance of women to promote other women. Having said these, why is board diversity imperative? According to Mary Mattis, to serve as a director on the board of a leading corporation is to hold a position of exceptional power and influence. Indeed, the decisions made in corporate boardrooms affect the lives of hundreds of thousands of employees and consumers, as well as the performance and policies of other corporations. The ebb and flow of economic activity, the dealings of the global marketplace and international strategies, these statements encapsulates the power and resources that are available to women who serve on publicly quoted companies, as well as state-owned enterprises. The advocacy is not for men to create space for women, but that women be given equal opportunity to develop their country using the same power and resources available within the socio-economic space. 
What then are the values that are encapsulated in board diversity? Several arguments have been canvassed to address this. The human resource argument is well articulated in the forward to the World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap Report 2011, issued by Klaus Schwab, the founder of the World Economic Forum and its senior director, Sandra Zadi, when they wrote that, over time, a nation's competitiveness depends significantly on whether and how it utilizes its human resource pool. Furthermore, innovation requires unique ideas and the best ideas thrive in a diverse environment. Countries and companies would thrive if women are educated and engaged as fundamental pillars in the economy. And diverse leadership is most likely to find innovative solutions to tackle the current economic challenges and to build equitable and sustainable growth. There is a growing consensus within the corporate community that diversity is an important goal that companies must seek to achieve. The business case for diversity generally rests on two primary claims. The first is that it improves outcomes, particularly financial performance. And secondly, it improves decision-making processes, which of course in turn improve company performance. We all know that women are important decision-makers at home, at work, and in business. You generally find women to be customers or potential customers, and some studies have actually concluded that women make 80% of consumer purchasing decisions. Thus, a company that can relate to customer needs with a balanced leadership team stands to gain market share and create better and more appropriate products and services to meet both female and other consumer needs. Multifaceted approaches have been devised at country and regional levels to address this development-related issue of underrepresentation of women on boards with various degree of success. I will take Norway as an example. Norway has taken the leadership in, the, in this area by resolving this issue by being the first to pass legislation to increase the number of women represented on boards through a quota system. So it's actually legislated. And today, about 44% of directors on publicly quoted companies in Norway are women having risen from just 7% in 2002. Spain, France and Iceland have also followed suit in this regard. In Australia, they've adopted a report or explain model since July 2010 to increase the number of women on boards. Finland, Denmark and Sweden have followed Norway and they've also developed strategies along this line. And in the US, uh, it's addressing this issue through affirmative action. WIMBIS is a women's organization burdened with a sense of urgency. We want the many qualified women out there to hold the position that they deserve to hold. And we want to see that change happen now. That's why WIMBIS has a Nigerian Women on Board program called WIMBOARD. WIMBOARD will operate on four platforms. The first is the WIMBOARD Institute, which will provide training and education opportunities to both serving and prospective board members. We hope to partner with Duke University campus in Johannesburg, South Africa, who will be our knowledge partners. The second platform is the WIMBOARD Executive Mentoring Program. We found that mentoring is a key tool for enhancing performance. Board dynamics can be a whole different arena. So it will be an invaluable tool for preparing women for board appointments. The WIMBOARD Executive Database is being developed to provide a database of competent, interested women who are qualified to serve in corporate boards. The database will provide all necessary details to ensure diversity. The WIMBOARD Advocacy is the fourth platform and it is designed to sensitize stakeholders about the added value of having a critical number of women as partners in our country's decision-making processes. We began the advocacy in March 2012 with our annual lecture, which was delivered by the CBN governor, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. It's important to state that this particular platform is being partly sponsored by the Supporting Public Advocacy for Regional Competitiveness, SPAC Initiative of Vital Voices, an organization co-founded by the U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, with a grant provided by the Netherlands Foreign Ministry's Funding Leadership Opportunities for Women program, otherwise known as the FLOW program. Now, one of the trajectories of the Wimbled Advocacy Strategy is the identification and engagement as champions of Nigerians who have exhibited support for board diversity, and they would be engaged as lead ambassadors to propagate the essence of Wimbled. These champions are Mrs. Funke Oshibodo, 
Mr. Pascal Duzier, Senator Sanusi Dagash, Mr. Atedo Peterside, CON, Mrs. Fatima Wali Abdurrahman, Mr. Gbenga Uyibodi, MFR, and Alaji Aliko Dangote, GCON.